In our last tech tip, we introduced the easy view mode and the bar chart and peak jump trend windows. In this tech tip, we will use these tools as a basic check on the instrument performance as well as to identify any ions present in the background of your mass spectrum. In the last tech tip, we showed a very quick way to check the detector response by simply breathing into the open TGA furnace and observing the response of the carbon dioxide and water peaks. I have the furnace open with helium as the carrier gas. Notice the relative concentration of helium in relationship to the other gases I'm tracking. I'm tracking nitrogen in green, oxygen in light blue, helium in red, argon in purple, water in blue, aqua is hydroxyl from the water molecule, black is carbon dioxide, hot pink is hydrogen from the water molecule, and orange is doubly ionized helium which is mass 2. Tracking these gases will give us a feel for how well our detector is responding. I'm closing the furnace now, and I expect the relative concentrations of the gases to change dramatically with respect to the concentration of helium. You will see the change almost immediately as the furnace closes. There will be a very quick shift in the baselines that we see as the atmospheric gases reduce in concentration. Helium will begin to trend upward. Notice the red line is increasing, as is the orange line down toward the bottom of the graph. There is now no doubt that mass 2 in this case represents doubly ionized helium and not hydrogen gas. After a minute or so, the downward trend of the atmospheric gases continue as the helium increases. Note that the water, hydroxyl, and hydrogen ions all follow the same trend with the other atmospheric gases. Our chamber gas is coming to equilibrium, and we're almost ready to start our experiment. After a few more minutes, we see that our atmospheric gases have essentially hit a minimum. Notice that we closed the furnace at roughly the two minute mark and arrived at the minimum at approximately eight minutes. If you're running samples that may be sensitive to the atmospheric gases or humidity, you may want to consider a 10 minute isothermal at the beginning of your TGA experiment to ensure complete gas exchange. We will now open the furnace to the atmosphere and notice that the trend of the gas concentrations will revert back to where we started. Atmospheric gas is increasing and helium decreasing. This is an example of how to use the peak jump trend window to confirm that your mass spec detector is working properly before you begin your experiment. The bar chart mode is accessed by clicking on this icon. It gives an updated scan of the ions being detected by the mass spectrometer. The furnace is in the closed position now, and these are the ions that would be in the background of your mass spectrum as you scan your sample. Since background subtraction is not done with this instrument, it is important to know which ions exist in the background and be able to distinguish them from your sample ions. Let's quickly go through and identify each of the ions in the background. Mass 40 is argon. Mass 32 is oxygen. Mass 28 is nitrogen. Mass 29 and 27 are isotopes of nitrogen. Mass 18 is water. Mass 17 is hydroxyl. Mass 16 is doubly ionized oxygen. Mass 14 is doubly ionized nitrogen. Of course, mass 4 is our purge gas helium. Mass 3 is likely an isotope of helium. Mass 2 is doubly ionized helium. Mass 1 is hydrogen. We do not observe any ions above mass 40, which is a good indicator that our TGA and mass spec systems are clean and free of any contaminants from previous experiments. We are now ready to run our samples. In this tech tip, we expanded the use of the easy view mode. In our next tech tip, we will develop a very simple method for determining the performance of our Discovery Mass Spec Detector.